We want to measure adopted work as well. Adopted work is what we call any work that the team has to pull forward into the sprint before the sprint is over in order to keep everyone meaningfully engaged. I, as a scrum master who's trying to coach my team toward more accurate commitments during each sprint planning meeting, need a metric that clearly shows if that team has a tendency to undercommit and is consistently having to pull work forward in, from the product backlog before the end of the sprint so that I can encourage the teams toward higher commitments during future sprint planning meetings without encouraging them to go in all the way into failure. It's a simple formula of the sum of the original estimates for work pulled forward after the commit meeting divided by the original commitment. And here's an example of how that works. We're taking items off of the product backlog and putting them on a sprint backlog for an original commitment of 19 points. And now we're going to step through the sprint. And as we do, we're only going to have three columns on the information radiator, by the way. So in progress or done, and you see that all of these cards have now moved over into the done column. But if you look at the, the sprintometer, it's showing us that we're not done with the sprint. We're only at the end of day three. So what are we going to do for the rest of the time? Well, we take a look at the top of the product backlog and we find a 13-point card. So we ask the invest cop, can this 13-point card come in? Is it immediately actionable, negotiable, valuable, estimable? Size to fit is very important because now it means it has to be sized to fit between this point in time and the end of the sprint. And finally, is it testable? If it is, we'll pull it into the sprint and we're going to have to add that 13 now to adopted work. We're also going to increase the total commitment by 13 points up to 32. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take these three metrics, the original commitment, the adopted work, and the total commitment, and we can create a simple ratio that shows us that we have adopted about 68.4% of our original commitment into the sprint before the sprint was over. Now, referring back to Deming, he would say more than 20% variance is probably not good. So if we've adopted more than 20% of the original commitment, we're going to have to consider that not necessarily awesome, although full points to the team and congratulations to them for being honest about how much more work they could do. So for any of you who are thinking, gee, I wish I had one of these little brown boxes that sits here and measures how things are going, well, you have one. It's not a little brown box, but it's your burn down chart. That's the purpose of a burn down chart is to help you realize when your team is functioning uh, in an optimal zone or they've got too much work or they've got too little work. So be sure you're using your burn down chart effectively. I see a lot of teams that even stop posting burn down charts or stop distributing burn down charts, and that's a big problem. Found work is the amount of work associated with a committed card that the team did not predict, which materially increases the complexity of the card in order to achieve it. And here's the user story. I, as a scrum master who's trying to help my team make more accurate and reliable commitments in sprint planning, need a clear way to measure the likelihood of unexpected work based on the card's original estimate so that I could advise the team toward making more achievable commitments and provide them fair warning when they're about to adopt a card that's probably going to have some surprises in it. And here's how we calculate that. We take the total work reported per card. Every day in the daily stand-up meeting, they're giving us estimates. And then we subtract the total estimate from the card. And that's then divided by the original commitment. So here's what that looks like. Same sprint as before. But now we found out that while the, the third card was in progress, there are these three additional points of complexity that must be achieved in order for the product owner to be satisfied with that card. So when we find that out, we add that to the total commitment, and we also have three points of found work now. We can use these, uh, these numbers to create these metrics to show whether the team has won or lost a sprint on a sprint-by-sprint -sprint basis. So what we need to be sure of is that the team has achieved at least 80% of their original commitment and surprise work has been 20% or less. So on the purple bars, we want to see at least 80% and on the orange bars, we want to see 20% or less. And you'll notice that they're being marked as a win or a loss based strictly on those numbers. So the next metric up is targeted value increase, which is the measure of the increase of velocity over time. And here's the user story for it. I, as a scrum product owner who is trying to evaluate the efficacy of the product directions I've chosen, need a reliable way to measure the increased value contribution of the team sprint over sprint so that I can compare that to the rate of increase in the value or increase in the uh, revenue that we are realizing as a company and I can be sure that the directions I've chosen are yielding the benefits I predicted. And here's the formula. We're going to take the current sprint's velocity and divide by the original sprint's velocity. When the team first gets together, they're going to estimate a body of work and attempt to achieve that. 
And so this particular team starts on May 5th, and they have a velocity of 8. Well, 8 divided by 8, that's 100%. So they all start at a 100%. Then by the next sprint, or at some point in the future, uh, they're up to a 13. Well, the current sprint is now a 13. So that becomes 13 divided by 8, then 21, then 37, always divided by 8. And that's going to show us when they've achieved hyperproductivity, when that number becomes 500% or more. Now, when I'm coaching individual teams using the shock therapy method, I only look for 240% on this number to determine whether it's time to step off and, and give the team more control over their own destiny or not. By the time they've achieved 240%, I find that most teams are able to extend the model uh, in a responsible way and to continue toward hyperproductivity. That is included on the chart that we saw before from velocity and work capacity because we mark the hyperproductive barrier with the red line. Now we need to talk about the accuracy of the estimation. If the team says something is five points, how often are they right? I, as a Scrum product owner who's interested in creating reliable roadmaps, including optimistic, likely, and pessimistic release dates for larger initiatives, I need a metric that's going to track the margin of error on the team's original estimates so that I can make you know, good faith estimates on what's going to be done by when. It's one minus the estimate delta divided by the total commit. So we're going to take the last sprint that we saw that had a little bit of found work in it, look at first the estimate delta. So if we had gone through this on a day-by-day -day basis and had the team report the actual amount of work it took to satisfy the card, you'll see on the first one they actually only did two points worth of work. So that one got easier by one point. The second one took two points, so it got harder by a point. The, the eight was three points larger than the five and so forth. So the estimate deltas sum to nine points. There was nine points of variance from their estimates to what it actually took. Taking that nine and dividing it by the total commitment, we get a ratio of 0.409. One minus that is 0.591 or 59.1%. And dimming again is gonna tell us 59% is not good enough. We want about 80%. So when you get a team that's uh, getting estimation accuracies that are this low, odds are that they are either not understanding the user stories that are being presented to them they don't know the code, they don't have the expertise or the skills to, to get it done. And if you see this number going too high, they're probably spending too much time in planning meetings. And I've even done things like give people 90 seconds to discuss uh, a user story once it's presented when I see that that number goes sufficiently high. And that brings it back down to about 80%. We don't want to put enough work into the estimation to get 100% accuracy. One of the things that needs to be considered when you're talking about estimation accuracy is the Fibonacci scale. Because the Fibonacci scale is not a continuous set of numbers. Uh, in other words, you don't have a continuous set of integers or a contiguous set of integers. But when you use the Fibonacci scale to estimate and aggregate the actual work done per day, you could get a contiguous number, so, or any of the contiguous numbers. So any integer between three and 27, or between one and infinity, is achievable if you simply put together the story point estimates from each daily stand-up meeting. How do you then judge accuracy? Well, if they estimated a story to be a three and it turns out to be a two, that is inaccurate because two was a number that was available to them on the Fibonacci scale. But if they estimate it to be a three and it comes out to be two points per day for two days, were they right or were they wrong? Well, what I tend to do is round up. So if you get a gap in the Fibonacci scale that has an odd number of integers in between the numbers on Fibonacci, I always want that odd number, that middle number, to round up toward the next point. So if they estimated something to be three points, it came in at four points, I would prefer to see that be five. But it could also be six, and then for eight, it could be anything from seven to 10. And we have to judge that as correct. If something comes in at 19 points and it was 21, 21 was the closest point they had on the Fibonacci scale, so we must judge that as being correct. And finally, accuracy of commitment. Here's the user story for the accuracy of commitment. I, as a Scrum product owner who's concerned about the accuracy of my roadmaps, need a metric that's going to inform me of the margin of error when the team commits to a body of work so that I know what that margin of error is and I'm able to predict it in a reliable way and lobby for higher commitments at future planning meetings without pushing the team toward failure. And here's how we do that. It's the sum of the original estimates divided by the original estimates plus adopted work plus found work. 
I could say that another way. You could say velocity divided by total commitment. Same thing. And here are a couple of charts from the RoboScrum spreadsheet that show you what those look like over a period of time. Now, on this particular team, if you take a look at the sprint under accuracy of commitment for 2010-09-08, that particular team went into their planning meeting because planning meetings are holy things and they start whether the company's in a happy place or not. They went into their planning meeting and the product owner immediately aborted that sprint. We didn't have time for a planning meeting because production was down. So you don't get a redo on your planning meeting. That was the planning meeting time, and this is how the product owner chose to use it. So in that particular scenario, every piece of work that the team did for that sprint was adopted work. You don't want to do that very often, but that was the best way to ad adhere to the principles of Scrum and keep moving forward. And again, reflecting back to Deming, we want to see about 80%.